Hey y'all, and welcome back to another episode of TZ Teaches. In this video, we're going to be talking about the three types of errors that you, as the programmer, are going to experience while programming. But before we talk about those three types of errors, let's talk about the difference between semantics and syntax in a language. So each language on Earth, whether it's a programming language or something that is spoken or written, has its own syntax. And syntax is just the way that words or phrases are arranged to create well-formed sentences for communication. Now, in C-sharp, syntax is checked when compiling, and actually, as you saw in an earlier video, when you are coding. So that way, if any of the syntax is incorrect, you can fix it for the language. Because if you don't fix the syntax, the program will produce an error and it will not run because it doesn't understand what you are trying to get it to do. So syntax for C Sharp is just the way that we are going to arrange certain statements and commands for programming so that the computer can understand what it is we're trying to get it to do. So while syntax refers to the arrangement of words and phrases in a language, the semantics refer to the meaning of those words and phrases in a language. Now, semantics for spoken words, English, Spanish, whatever, can change based on where the emphasis is placed in a sentence. So, for example, if the sentence is, I didn't say you stole my money, depending on where you place the emphasis, it can drastically change the meaning. If we say, I didn't say you stole my money, we would understand that it wasn't you that said it, but somebody else said you stole their money. If we place the emphasis instead on the last word, which is I didn't say you stole my money, then we can understand that we said you stole something, but not money. Thankfully in C Sharp, there is no semantic change. So whatever it is that we write we can expect to have the exact same outcome every single time because there is no way to place emphasis on particular statements. And now that we've covered the syntax and semantics, which cause the first of our errors, let's talk about the three types of errors. All right, so our first type of error is known as a compile time error. Now, these are also referred to as syntax errors because what will happen is if anything in your code's syntax or semantics are wrong, the compiler will produce a syntax error. So, for example, if we remove the semicolon at the end of our console.write line, we can see that there is now an error and a red squiggly line in our text editor, letting us know where the error exists, and the error list is letting us know what the error is. And so this is a very simple syntax error, which we can then fix by adding the semicolon back. However, Visual Studios will also check for particular things. Let's say we create a variable real quick and just divide by zero, even though syntactically this is correct syntax, semantically we have division by zero and it's saying, hey, that's an error. We can't do that. I'm not trying to break the universe. So fix your error. So both of those are compile time errors and those are the easiest to fix because Visual Studios helps us fix them. Now for our second type of error, which is a runtime error, I've changed up the code a little bit and Let's take a look at what's going to happen. So syntactically, everything is fine. We are writing something out to the console, taking in something and writing something out again. And there are no syntax errors. However, when we run this program, if we were to say, enter in a zero here, what's going to happen is we're going to get an error. And a runtime error is an error that is caused during the execution of your program. And runtime errors will cause your programs to terminate abnormally or otherwise crash like we're used to. So for example, attempting to divide by zero where we stored zero in X and then 10 divided by X gives us a runtime error because you cannot divide by zero. So the best programs are robust, meaning that they try to avoid as many runtime errors as possible. Now, in a future video later in the course, we will talk about how to handle runtime errors. But for now, just keep in mind that anytime your program crashes because of an error, there's probably another way that you could have coded it to prevent that. Now, the last of our errors is the most problematic for a programmer because 
it is a logical error. Essentially, this error is where a program compiles fine, it doesn't crash when you run it, but it produces results that you weren't expecting or that you weren't even wanting. Now, the problem with a logical error is that it's caused by defects in your logic because a computer is only going to do what you tell it to do literally very step by step it's not going to do anything except what you tell it to do so if you end up with a logical error you have to then go back through your thought process and reflect on what you did wrong in order to fix it the process of finding the defects in your own logic is called debugging and there are a few ways to help you with debugging and I'll do a video on that in the future. But for now, just know logical errors are what you are going to experience the most of as a programmer. So now that we've talked about all three types of errors and the syntax and semantics of the language, it's time to actually start learning some C-sharp coding commands. I'm Sir Pinkbeard, thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next video.